Thank Jin, Liao, and Lucas uh, for this wonderful workshop together. And uh, well, really my pleasure to get invited again. And well, I, I, I don't really care whether it's I recognize that it's leader or not. I care I'm recognized to be still young. <laughs> <laughs> Hope next time I can still attend it. <laughs> Although, yeah, I don't know who will organize next one. Uh, well, as we learned from Maya's talk, uh, the, actually there are this topological phase we realize in many materials. There are already a lot of topological materials. And uh, my <clears throat> in this talk, I want to my interest is here. I ask a question about this topological response. Like uh, as <coughs> Adolfo talked about us about this linear response and the nonlinear response. And here especially, uh, here I will talk about, for example, like if we have a current uh, and we will get spin accumulation here, this is called a spin hole effect. And if this spin are not balanced, we have a charge accumulation, this is a normal hole effect. And this linear response, go to higher order, suppose we, the input is a light, and then actually we can still get a DC current response. Uh, <clears throat> then here, uh, well, for example, anomalous hall, there are intrinsic anomalous hall and uh, extrinsic. But here, what I'm talking is mainly about this intrinsic property, and uh, <clears throat> dominantly from the band structure. Uh, for example, we start from the anomalous hall, we know like, uh, it's well started in many magnetic material from simple magnet to this magnetic wire sand metal and <coughs> magnetic doped topological insulator. And also for the spin hole, and, uh, in this uh, spintronic uh, community, like uh, platinum is uh, well, maybe the most popular one and used in a lot of device. And also topological insulator. Well, we know at the beginning, topological insulator was called uh, quantum spin hole <coughs> insulator. And uh, well, in this most of the case, this family, this material, they are not very magnetic. And uh, for this optical, this nonlinear optical material, and uh, here is mainly like a, this is a traditional study, this polar oxide. And the uh, uh, recent years experiment theory focused on this non-magnetic wire sand metal. And uh, here I try to well, you already already like a, a general feature of this this phenomena. They are related with this very curvature. Uh, the, the very curvature here is this omega, contribute to this anomalous velocity. And uh, the only message we need to know the very curvature is purely, is a purely from the band structure effect. You know the block wave function, you know the dispersion, then you have the you have the very curvature. And but here I try to ask is like uh, if this system there's a magnetism, especially for the spin hole or this nonlinear response, and there will, might be something different. And all here, since now today, we have a lot of especially magnetic topological material like this wire sand metal. And then this can do okay if we have a wire magnetic material. We can possibly we have have a strong anomalous Hall effect. And uh, but can it do something more? Can it be a platform to for, for us to ask for new questions? And well, here Barry curvature is well established to uh, explain this phenomena. But maybe there, there, there could be something different, something slightly beyond the very curvature picture. Uh, for example, this is story started from like, years ago. We started you know, there in the Dresden Claudia group, we started material. The formula is MN3 germanium. And then at the same time, there's another T material. First, this is a crystal structure. Most interesting is this in the layer, this big atom is the MN. It shows a non-collinear AFM structure. In this, like, well, actually, it's a Kagami lattice. In this triangle, the spin form 120 degree angle. They stay in plane, and this magnetic order is robust at room temperature. Actually, the order temperature is around is even above 400 Kelvin. Then, usually in AFM, we we don't expect a normal Hall response, right? Because ordinary AFM, we have a collinear structure. There, there are the spin up and down, this signal totally cancel each other. Or in other language, that means we have a time reversal and a lattice shift symmetry, as, as Maya explained. And this, this symmetry involved time reversal, it killed the anomalous Hall response. But in this non-collinear case, this symmetry was removed. Then therefore, uh, anomalous Hall is allowed to come out. 
actually, they, this principle was first pointed out uh, <coughs> by er, the, this early paper, and about that time they predict a different material. Then this this uh, <coughs> this anomaly was realized in this family. And then it that means now we have a material works as a <coughs> at room temperature as strong anomalous hall. And my interest there is well, that time I ask maybe we, we argue magnetic YSA metal has an anomalous hall. But at that time we didn't have really a magnetic YSA metal. But now maybe this material has, has this wire property. And indeed in the band structure we find the YSA metal. But well actually this is a wire metal means you see the band structure. And uh, this is a typical metal. Fermi energy, fer the Fermi energy cross the middle of several bands. And well, the, maybe this is another being like a, we call this topological material wire sem metal. <coughs> they never semi. <laughs> they always very <wear> metallic. <laughs> and others topological insulator. Well, they rarely insulating. <laughs> but anyhow, this does not stop us like uh, to, to observe this anomalous thought, this this transport property. And uh, well, this is the, our dream. Uh, our reality is always more complicated. And here, what I plot here, like these points, they are wire points. In other words, we have many bands near the frame energy. Uh, this band crossing actually easily generates some crossing points. There are many, so many crossing points. And then yet, if we go close enough to the, these points, actually, we see this very curvature, like show this monopole structure. And well, these details does not uh, matter too much. Uh, first, we ask the question, science, we mirrored the anomalous hole of this material. And uh, we, we see the band structure has a strong barrier curvature. And we ask another question, whether this AFM material maybe also have strong spin hole effect. Although people focus on non-magnetic material before. Now this is an AFM, we don't have a total net magnetic moment. Then the, in the spin hole actually like usually we assume this is the well this is a standard the textbook linear response. Like we, we apply electric field, we, we have some measurable quantity. If this part is the current, then this is uh, <coughs> all this part can be the spin current. And uh, yeah, well, this is a standard part. If this is current, and actually here, this this part, this imaginary part from this linear response, and this is the anomalous talking activity. But if it's a spin current, and here actually, if we have time reversal symmetry, and this tells us the second term, okay, is even in time reversal symmetry, but the first term here, this term, is odd. Therefore, if we have a time reversal symmetry, the first term will, will vanish. And uh, therefore, in previous work, when people study platinum, like a constant artillery, this non magnetic material, people directly go to calculate this part and, uh, in theory. And this part actually is the barrier curvature contribution. If it's a spin, spin current, and this part actually, this is the spin current operator, or we call it the spin barrier curvature, or spin dependent barrier curvature. And well, now we. we then lo look at the symmetry. If you have a time reversal symmetry, anomalous hole, okay, we, we care the barrier curvature part. And uh, for the spin hole, we also care the barrier curvature part because this part is zero. But if we have time reversal symmetry breaking, if it's magnetic, therefore here, because this, the first part is not zero. And then that means for a magnetic system, if we care about the spin, spin current, the spin hole effect, there should be a new term come out. And this new term, how, well, let's look, uh, this term you see is the, the, the real part of this response function here. This is related actually, it's the relaxation time. And uh, oh, it's the shift of the Fermi surface, like the normal connectivity. And if we look close to the Fermi surface, actually, this is the spin texture on the Fermi surface. It's not a surprise, you see the spin point here, and the point this. Suppose we, we push, a, we apply a current along this x direction. Well, sure, you see the most current uh, contribute is from the spin along x, right? We can get a current the spin polarized along x axis, and uh, this is, we, we can write such a response. And uh, well, the, but a little different is now. Now, actually, we started with the AF material. There's no magnetization. We apply a current, then the current becomes spin polarized. And uh, this is a little surprise, actually. This is like equivalent. If we have an FM metal, we apply a current. 
the current is being polarized. That's never a surprise. Um, but then this means, like, actually, like here we apply a current, this current is polarized. But if two sides, we have a domain wall in between, if two sides, we have opposite face, then here, this current will become smaller, like uh, this is a terminal junction. It's hard to turn off through. If the two sides have the same face, it's easy to turn off. But if we change it to FM, it's totally natural, even trivial, right? Magnetic terminal junction. But actually, we can do the same with this non-collinear AFM structure. And then about the spin hole, go, go a little more detail. Like if we have time reversal for this one, we consider the crystal, the space group symmetry. And uh, this is, for example, this is one part of the allowed matrix element. Uh, actually, this is for the time reversal even part. And for the, like actually the time reversal odd part, we have another two, another two contribution. And they are different matrix element. That means if experiment can mirror all the matrix element, uh, you find this term is non-zero. Definitely, this is only from this time reversal breaking part, the sig one part. Actually, recent experiment, uh, they, they mirrored exactly this term out and uh, claimed this is a time reversal odd part. Also, experiment can even easier to identify it, like you apply a magnetic field, and magnetic field, like kind of to change this phase from, from this, one, this crystal stru magnetic structure to another one, you switch. Like, in, like you apply a uh, the time reversal op operation. Apply time reversal, this part does not change. Or this part will change sign. And uh, then clearly, experiments say you reverse the magnetic field. You reverse this spin hole connectivity. This is a clear signature. There's only contributions from here. Uh, next, like about this, uh, let's go say more about this nonlinear response. The nonlinear response, well, uh, Adolfo already explained us here. I, I simply see from this one, like uh, the light electric field is E cosine omega and the polarization we can write to the second order. Then the car DC current as a time derivative, actually the, you, you can see sim simply after the omega t, the average, this part is non zero. We can get a non zero DC current out. And then actually people know this non-linear response already observed first in, in some this pollen oxide material and the later is <coughs> extended to study many other, other systems. And here, the only pre-explanation is about this uh, required system should break inverted symmetry. And uh, actually, in recent years, and uh, well, this is the one organizer, uh, Mr. Chairman's work, and uh, already found that actually the tantal arsenide, the first wild sand metal, has the nonlinear response. It actually is the chi 2 part. It's 100 or oh, several, two or 300 times larger than ordinary material. And, then they also built for proposals about this quantized photocurrent. And uh, well, this this so far, actually, I, I, when, when I revisit, let's see, actually so far our interest looks really focused on this mag non-magnetic material, right? Then science for spin hole motivate us, like if it becomes magnetic, something may be different. And uh, then this motivate me to think about a question. Uh, let's just forget the very phase and all this complicated formula, even the response formula. Just forget about it. Suppose we ask a simple question. We shine a light to a material. How, to, how can we get a DC current? The most simple one we can explain to undergraduate student is, OK, the light generates an electron hole pair. My structure tells us the, the hole and the electron has opposite group velocity. If the lifetime is long enough, we, we can have a DC current. But this never this never really work out because at K you have a velocity, minus K you have another excitation, right? They always exactly cancel each other. At K minus K, the velocity cancel. And then the question is, okay, let's break this symmetry, break the K minus K symmetry. If we reduce, like for here, if we have inverse symmetry and the time reversal, that's all with the band double degeneracy, if we break inverse symmetry, actually these two rush bar are like bands we still have this symmetry, this k minus k velocity cancellation. Then let's just break both. If we break both, now the band structure left and right are not symmetric. And in this case, we can get a net velocity contribution. And or even go to an extreme case, we break P and T, but we still keep PT, for example. 
Yeah, all the bands still double degenerate, but really it's not symmetric anymore. And in this case, and yeah, like here, these two cases, we can get a non zero velocity out. And then this is corresponding to a DC current. Then clearly, from this mechanism, the DC current should be proportional to the dipole transition between this swellings and the connection band. And also proportional to the relaxation time, to the relaxation time tall here. And this is a dipole transition, also proportional to the velocity difference at k minus k point, these pairs. And uh, yeah, actually, like, uh, well, actually surprised me, actually, this, this term, people didn't re really recognize it, maybe because people pay a lot of attention to this <coughs> time reversal symmetric case. And here, this part, you may ask, like, quantitatively, which determines the symmetry breaking between left and right? Yeah. And here I didn't really talk uh, talk about the rule of the spin orbit coupling. Actually, to be accurate, it's exactly spin orbit coupling determines how left and the right they are different. If spin orbit coupling is zero, actually this this still perfect symmetric. And well, for this mechanism, we propose like a uh, like a system like actually has this PT symmetry. Like uh, if we have two magnetic layer, this is a magnetic insulator. We have this AFM structure, and here exactly like uh, actually the crystal has inversion symmetry, but the spin break inversion, and we have this combined PT symmetry here. If it is a fully ferromagnetic, and then here we have inversion symmetry, the photo current it should be zero exactly, and about in these two cases, uh, we can get a net zero current because of the imbalance between the K minus chi. This is a DFT band structure. You can see there here actually. This side, this gap is still slightly larger. This side is smaller. Actually, this gap is exactly the spin of the coupling gap. This, because of this P and T both are broken, the left and the right, they are not necessarily the same gap. And, well, later when, when I talked to several experiment group, like fine told me this material actually is very insulating. Even you have a photo current out, and uh, <coughs> maybe you cannot really mirror it. Uh, then, oh, actually, by the way, this is a demonstration about this sort of current from the, the band transition. And this is without SOC, you see, it's perfect symmetric. And here now, you break the symmetry. And we, we can get the non zero and the net current out. And about, this is about a DC current. Actually, the a DC current is an, another second order response, like the second harmonic generation, uh, shares the same symmetry as this DC current. Actually, recently there's a, another experiment uh, <coughs> by Xiaodong and Wu, and uh, they mirror exactly the same system, or they mirror the second harmonic generation, and they get exactly the same symmetry one. And uh, maybe this really to see this DC current is very challenging. But here, let's revisit actually this mechanism. Here, I only need, what I only need, I only care is the K minus K symmetry breaking. And I don't, I don't, actually, I don't really need an insulator, even a semi-metal, or we have PT symmetric Dirac semi-metal, as long as P and T both are broken. Actually, in, in reality, I think there, there are many materials, uh, especially these 2D materials, and this is a 3D material. They all have, have, have such symmetry. And maybe, yeah, I don't, well, this is a question. Uh, experiment where no matter which material may be work. And then, okay, l now let's come back to the anomalous hole again. And I, I uh, later about come back to the linear response about the anomalous hole. You see, this anomalous hole is observed even even to, four, to 400 Kelvin. About this material, actually, these, both these materials, actually they are really dirty material. They are dirty in a sense. They are not exactly three to one it, you know, even many, many times there are even 10% defect. And the 10% defect, actually it means like the electron travel about uh, 10 nanometer, it will see a defect. This is a really dirty case. And also, I said this is a metal, not really semi-metal, huge density state, eight. Then the Lorentz cross part, ordinary hole response, just the zero, almost zero. Actually, you see this data, this this whole data actually is the raw data. It's not to remove the linear background because the linear background is negligible. And that means 
actually dirty give us an advantage and this huge metallic advantage. Whatever we, we measure this hall, we will get uh, the dominantly the anonymous hall signal. I don't, you don't have to worry about other competing mechanisms. And then this is a kind of advantage of dirty. Then since this anonymous hall, it feels the intrinsic barrier curvature from band structure, then other transport property like thermal and thermoelectric transport like the thermal, this is the charge hole, or like the thermal hole effect, and apply a temperature gradients. And uh, here, this is the, ther the anomalous thermal, thermal <coughs> the heat current, and uh, the kappa xy is the thermal hole conductivity, and uh, this is the nonce that is the thermal and electric coupling together. Actually, this thermal, thermal and electric, thermal electric transport, they also feel this very curvature. And then, Actually, in experiment, experiment to quickly mirror this material, this dirty material, you get this thermal hole. And uh, here, actually, in thermoelectric, usually we ask a question, like, when thermal connectivity and charge connectivity, their ratio, of this called the, this Lorentz number, at a zero temperature limit, and it's a constant. It's constant defined by this Boltzmann constant and the, uh, the charge. And here, this is at zero, zero temperature for 3D material. Most of the time it's valid, and simply because the, we, we have the same particle to bring you the charge and the heat uh, spontaneously. And at the finite temperature, this normal transport, we, we know it's get violated. It's not a constant anymore, simply because, for example, we, we have a lot of scattering. This like electron photo coupling. Electron loads the energy to the lattice. And uh, here, the law, here, this minimum from the law get violated. But now, suppose now we have this anomalous hall system, we can mirror this sigma xy, copper xy part. And we always see this, for example, this sigma xy is from intrinsic property, not depends on scattering, not depends on tau. And well, this part becomes really robust. If it's robust at finite temperature, that mean, does it mean this should be a constant, always? And, well, naively, maybe we, we believe, suppose, ideally, it's purely intrinsic, and uh, we, we have this <coughs> intrinsic contribution, it might be a constant. But let's see how experiment get. Actually, experiment here, the experiment was done by Carmen Benia, and uh, yeah, actually, at the beginning, his, his experiment motivated me to think about this question, and he mirrored these two material, one is this T material, another is germanium one. For me, at the beginning, from band structure, it looks almost the same. I, I never imagined these two will make some qual uh, qualitative difference. But in experiment, clearly, this T material, this anomalous Lorentz number is always flat, always almost a constant, up to room temperature. And about the germanium one, easily just go away from this constant around 100 Kelvin. And that's, well, where it surprised me. Always the first question they ask, how important the ordinary scattering, yeah? Maybe still matters. And for, to observe the ordinary scattering, this is the longitudinal resistivity. Uh, depend, it's dependent on the temperature. This is a, a standard way, like uh, if we have electron phono coupling, the resistivity in, increase as the increase in temperature. And uh, actually here we see germanium and T, these two compounds, they look very similar. Actually, if you want, at least at 100 Kelvin, there's not, nothing strange happen. And this part are not, not like we, we don't see a direct correlation between this violation and here, the, the scattering part. The science, okay, as here, we, we, we talk this part is intrinsically from the barrier phase, from the band structure. And let's see a little, a little more close how it's related with the, with the barrier phase. And this is the very phase. We sum over the very phase below the frame energy. And this is a zero temperature case, actually. Here, this is the <coughs> chemical potential dependent very phase. And well, here, this sigma xy at a finite temperature, actually, this part, just a dirt function, only means it takes the, the very phase at the chemical potential zero, and we, we, we get it. But for thermal, because here, thermal is energy flow and we have an energy square here. This is a very important difference. And this part is the same. Here also we know at a zero temperature limit, this 
thermal conductivity exactly go to a constant with this uh, charge part. That means at zero temperature for this, this formula with the matter from the law is solid. But at a finite temperature, what happened? Well, this blue part, this part, this factor is a dark function. At a finite temperature, we have some broadening. This part, we have the energy square. It becomes a double peak function. Uh, this double peak, this the peak distance is the energy difference. Then now immediately we know, like actually, suppose this if this part is a constant or almost a linear in this way, actually these two integral their ratio will be always like this. This Lorentz number, and uh, this is simply a way of how to integrate the this sigma x y part. But if we have some special case, very nonlinear, and we get this part, and that means the the electron. This integration will feel the center part, but the thermal will feel very far from the Fermi surface. I mean, they, 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 they pick up a different part of the Fermi surface. And then in this case, we don't have to assume the, their ratio will be constant, right? And actually, simple, simply for this, we all, we, now we compare these two materials. Actually, this is the ab initial band structure. This color you see is the very curvature with a different sign, the blue and the red, they are the opposite sign. And you can, this is the energy dependence, this is the chemical potential, and this is the sigma xy value. You can see it first. For the T material, it's relatively flat for energy. And for the germanium material, actually, there, there's a small peak here. And actually, the, the distance between from energy and this small peak is in the order of this 100 Kelvin. And then it's not a surprise this germanium one easily go away from, from this Lorentz number. <clears throat> but this one, this flat one, just like we have a constant constant in, the, in this integral. Um, okay, you may ask, like, why these two material can be so different? And if we look at the formula slightly, now I, well, roughly we can rationalize in a way. Germanium and the tin, germanium has relatively weak spin of the coupling. If SOC is strong enough, we have made it SOC, we have increased this gap, right? This anti crossing <coughs> gap. And uh, this anti crossing gap will be larger and larger. Another consequence is then the, the very curvature is smeared, is smeared in momentum space and in energy. Therefore, the team one in the end is smeared more, becomes more average, more average distribution to energy. And this one easily, is, uh, we have some small gap, we have some jump. And in this sense, we have one more possibility, like to violate the Wittmann Franz law here. And all, yeah, the, well, I think now I'm done. This is my summary. And let's see, this time of breaking up uh, that actually motivated us to think some slightly different new contribution in linear response and linear response and nonlinear case. And in the end, I thank my collaborators, especially. Here with uh, Fernando and helpful discussions with Liang Wu and Adolfo. And good, thank you for your attention. Questions? So, one thing that I noted in your resistance measurements when you compared the two manganese tin and germanium yeah. is that. There seems to be in the germanium an upturn in resistivity, right? I mean, it's somewhat unusual that at around 200 Kelvin that yeah. you have something that on the one hand is order of 100 micron centimeters as so a rather good me metallic state. And at the same time, it has, technically speaking, an insulating temperature behavior. So they, right? It, yeah. it increases as you this, down. this slide. That's right. Yeah. That is, if you think of anything phonon scattering related, really non-trivial. And it somewhat happens in a similar temperature range. So I was wondering if you could make a similar type of density of states argument that somehow, even though you sharpen the Fermi Dirac distribution mm -hmm. and you reduce the number of phonons, you still get an enhancement of resistivity as you cool down. Mm -hmm. That it's somewhat of a, of a still a semiconductor-like effect of shrinking yeah. this out of some higher density of states. Yeah, but somehow the, I think this system is super metallic. Uh, but then why does it do that? This behavior also very anisotropic. If you change the current direction, say from 100 to 001, the behavior also changes. To what? The change? Change. Phase change. behavior changes. Temperature. 
no, it's amplitude that we change, or it's totally qualitatively different. The this kind of this this hump behavior. Yeah. So it changes actually. So one case is very sharp, another case is more flat. Okay, maybe. Because the talk is about uh, topological magnetic materials, yeah, uh, yeah. I think half of it uh, doesn't really relate anymore to topology. Not where necessary. Yeah. <laughs> so, is that the, the trend? <laughs> so, so, is that what we can take away from here that topology maybe leads us to think about other directions? Yeah, all I would say, like, uh, for the sake of we started topological material. And uh, actually, for this, we actually we, we actually we revisit many old material and create a new material. This is a, well, this is a, like a, in this platform. There's a new question come up. So these magnetic photo photovoltaic effects very interesting. So do you do you understand what happens when when in the clean limit when tau goes to infinity? Tau go to infinity, then. So you have infinite large current. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, well, actually, this is a this is a. Well, I didn't say this is this light. I don't assume it's a circular polarized. Actually, it's a linear polarized light. Right. And uh, actually, this is a you would get an injection current from linear light. Yeah. So do you know what happens as as, the, as it becomes cleaner and cleaner? You mean tau tau go to infinite? Yeah. Then you get a super large current. Yes, I assume. But uh, like injection Not current, we never see the injection current. Yeah, yeah, infinite, infinite. So, yeah, I have one question. So, so in, in principle, I think uh, this kind of uh, magnetic photogalvanic effect applied to manganese bismuth chlorine with even layer, right? Yeah, 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 yes, yes. This yeah. AFM structure. So then, in, in that case, you, you also have surface state. Right. Yeah. So then, yeah. you have to, you have a gap to surface thing. No, it, it's it's anti ferromagnetic. Yeah, yeah. But the, then because the timers of break, the Dirac state opens small gap. That's people claim, but late actually Alpha didn't really find it. So anyway, I'm curious. So if if, if this kind of uh, photo galvanic effect mm -hmm. happened during the surface state band, are there some new uh, properties? Uh. Your property? It's a very good question, actually. This means your question is simply like if we're for this 2D band. Yeah. Yes. I think in this 2D case, we break inversion clearly because it's surface. And uh, time are breaking. And you will see the same effect. Oh, in other words, this is not limited to an uh, insulator metal. And uh, even in a metal case, you have the you alive. Any other questions? Okay, if not, let's thank Green High. Thanks.